In our house, this is called twisted head baby because its head is twisted and doesn't go back the other way. Technically, it belongs to the toddler, but whenever the three-year-old sees the toddler with this, she must have it. She's got 50 to a million soft toys of her own, but there's only one twisted head baby. So as soon as the toddler's got hold of it, the three-year-old must have it. It's called scarcity, and it's one of the mental shortcuts that we use to make decisions. You know, if something is scarce, we feel an urgent need to get hold of some of it for ourselves in case it goes away. That's why you'll see in copywriting all the time, uh, you know, countdown timers, sale ends on Friday, first 10 customers, you get this trinket. It's all to do with triggering that scarcity response and getting the customer to make a decision urgently. But there are more sophisticated ways that you can trigger that response in your own copywriting. You can, for instance, you know, talk about secrets. You know, it, it, that's why you'll see blog posts with the five secrets of a professional copywriter, because secrets are by definition scarce. Uh, words like luxury trigger a sense of scarcity. You could choose to tell people that you only take on 10 clients a year or 10 clients a week or 10 clients, a, you know, whatever that number is. There are various ways that you can give that sense that what you have to offer is not part of an endless supply. And when your clients believe that it's not part of an endless supply, then they start to ask themselves how much they desire it and how quickly can they get hold of it. And those are all great things that you want your copywriting to do. So next time you sit down to write something or have somebody write something for you, see whether you can get a little element of scarcity running through it. And let me know how you go.